Hello and welcome to another episode of Shampoo and Booze. This is episode number 53 on ShampooandBooze.com. So, we have not done a podcast in a while. Yes. Because we just chose, instead of like doing these like little incremental podcasts about our edge renovation, I felt like it was getting a little, like, we painted a wall. We <laughs> were like, let's just get it done. Let's just finish and then we'll talk about it. Yep. So, we are completely finished. We are done. Yep. And let me just talk about the timeline because, I mean, if anyone has ever renovated a house, timelines are always fun to talk about. So we bought the house in November 2015. Yes. We took a whole year to save up cash. So why did we buy the house if we weren't going to work on it right away? Well, in our area, kind of cool special houses only pop up every so often. So it's one of those things where if we didn't buy this house, then it wouldn't be there. So Right. And the other thing, too, is, number one, we had been looking for a while. We put an offer on other places, and the offers didn't work out with the you know buyers. Right. And we were like, we like this one. Yeah. Let's just pull the trigger. It's like when you live in a rural area, there's only a limited amount of housing stock. Like, we watch, even now, yeah. everything that goes up for sale and everything that sells. And it might be five houses a week if even that you know right i mean it's not so and and again we found a place that was really special with with a view and interesting yeah a layout of the house anyway so we bought that in november 2015 we didn't start the innovations the uh edge renovations till october 2016 yeah so a year later we finished august 2017 (laughs) so uh, if you need to do the math there. So it took us about 10 months to actually renovate the house. In that time period, though, we took about a three-month break. Right, um, because we ran out of money. Well, so. We ran out of cash, <laughs> um, and we had to pay our taxes. Right. Uh, and we talked about this on our other podcast a little bit, where it was like, we got to pay our tax bill because we actually made more money than we thought this year, which is great uh but we were like we gotta take a chunk of time out of the renovation so it was a little less than two years from buying the home to it's finishing it and having it on airbnb right people can rent it so if you go to our blog shampoo you can check out the before and after its photos and ryan you were really good about Yes. Taking photos the entire time. Like, I was not focused on that. I was like, how do we get this thing to look better? But uh, you had the foresight to, I want to remember how bad this looked. I want to remember how bad it looked. And for the farmhouse rental, uh, which got done, it's three seasons ago, so three years ago. It took me, like, several years to put together a before and after, uh, like, photo book. Number one, it took me a long time to like gather all the photos together because I didn't have them organized and it was, it took us three years to renovate that house. So it took me forever to make that book. Uh, number one, I procrastinated. And number two, my photos were in all these different folders and it was just crazy. And it was over three years. So this time I was like, from the day we bought it, I brought my camera, my like fancy SLR camera over and I just took like a hundred photos. And then Anytime I went over there to look at progress, I just grab my phone and like take a bunch of photos. And then obviously we have the finished Airbnb photos. So last night I actually put together a before and after because I think it's important when people stay in the house, they're like, this is great. It's beautiful. But you're like, you got to see how it was. Right. So we actually, there's, you know, a bunch of these services online where you can have a book made, like an actual yeah, photo bound, book, like a bound book. Yeah. Right? It looks like a real book. Yeah. So cool. we actually put these in the uh, rental so people can kind of appreciate like, oh, like this place, uh, you saw it look like this and now it looks like this. Right. It's not like we just came in and right. like painted the walls yeah. and put furniture. You in. know, because everyone's into those like... Uh, the HGTV uh, shows. Yeah, those home garden <laughs> shows. So everyone like loves that stuff. And I mean, I love that stuff. Yeah. So, and also uh, as we've been, um, you know, talking to people about it, we uh, kind of bartered with some friends to do photographs for Airbnb 
we were showing them the before pictures because we're like, you got to know how bad this place was. And they're like, oh, my God. You know, to have that album of before photos, you're like, you know, we look at it and we're like, why did we buy this place? But I mean, I know why, because it's a special location, has beautiful well, views. I mean, it was interesting to be able to look back at that. And I remember when we bought it and it just didn't seem as bad right. as it looks. You have rose colored glasses on. Compared to what it looks like now. Right, right. At the same time, I think that, you know, we were experienced enough to know that we could turn this into something cool. So yeah. I knew it wouldn't, this wasn't the end product that we were buying. And some of it is like, we've said it before, like we have to be somewhat, it's naive or somewhat in a love or with a place where we overlook yes. the fact that some things are going to take a really long time. You know, like... Yeah. I underestimate how much work certain projects are going to be. And if I don't do that, then... We I'll never do anything. Yeah. And, 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 yeah. and it's like I said, there's so a little housing stock in our area. It's not like we live in a big urban area where there's just like hundreds, just, thousands yeah. of houses that we can choose from. And if one looks a little complicated, we wait for the uh, next one. You know, right. we had to uh, move on this. The other thing too uh, about our renovations generally is we will add things to it. And one of the big projects we added was we added an entire room right. plus part of a room upstairs and an outdoor deck. Right. So our original thing was not to do anything like that and and we just like layer upon layer we were like let's do this because it's going to make the house so much better right. and it did but it's true that takes extra and, time and so that so that talks about the house is like a puzzle right you know i mean i was thinking about that for us when we buy these houses they're like a puzzle because you know they're right. older houses i mean you know one house we have is like from the 1850s uh, 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 50s we have another house from like the, you know 1978 and right this is more like the 19 1973 like, yeah you know so it's an old house and it's a puzzle because if you start picking at it and it, you're like oh it's no one's touched the plumbing in that <laughs> long or the roof right. hasn't been touched and you right. start picking away oh and there's some it's a rot in this beam and, and i gotta replace the whole and thing, also you know you know so what you have to think about shoring up the foundation of the house you know the these the the, uh, the structure yeah the structure it, yeah. and then but also the, the puzzle on top of that is but then what do you want it to become you know? right and how do you want the rooms to flow well and, and also you know. like when you're changing the layout and adding rooms and i mean you get to a point where you're like okay we're basically stripping it down to the studs which is what we did we want to re-insulate it we want to redo the electrical and redo the plumbing. Right. There wasn't a lot of plumbing, so that wasn't a big deal. But, you know, we're like, we need all lights and electrical in this new room and on this deck, so we might as well just redo it in the whole house. Right. You know, so yeah. that just like, <laughs> you're just like, because if you don't, you have a half shoddy, you know, electrical system and then like a new one in this other room. And, and you're like... And <laughs> And the thing we always tell ourselves is, like, we're never going to do this again. Like This is happening now. Once we do this, like, everything gets covered up, and I don't want to do this again right. unless I have to. Right. So, so we might as well do it now. So basically you redo all the yeah. systems. And I think, you know, we said it before, I think the way that we think about these properties is these are, like, our lifetime properties, you know. So, yeah. you know, we want to have a house where we're spending a significant amount of money up front, but this is something we're going to hold on to for. 20 years i mean i don't know i mean more than that I yeah know. i mean yeah. just you know this is a money maker for us for as long as, as we as long as we're working yeah we aren't just trying to get the house up and uh, running quick and then in five years we'll sell it or something like that right which actually we've heard recently people doing that right um which is cool you know yeah it's like a different model like people are kind of flipping houses, but they're doing it slow. So they rented it first, and then they wait for the market to get better. Right. In that area, and then they sell the house, and you know. And, and it's that's... worth more because it's like a profitable rental or yeah, whatever. Yeah, and that's that's cool. But uh, that's not what we're doing. You know, we want to make this to where we can rent this thing and be making thirty, forty thousand dollars on it for as long as we want it to. Right. You know, and then when we sell the house. We'll get all of our money back. Oh, totally. Yeah. Hopefully more, you know, yeah. hopefully because we'll hold the house for so long, the market will change dramatically yeah. and, you know, prices will just rise. So yeah. That's the idea. Uh, 
yeah, so as of now, the house has been on Airbnb for two weeks. Yep. And we've booked 11 at nights already. Yep. Yeah. So that's, you know, we were worried getting it up there without any reviews or, you know, anything. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, people seem to it's respond. I mean, we well got a it. we got a booking last night. So yeah. it's very exciting to get those bookings like, okay, we did it right <laughs> again, <laughs> you yeah. know. And and that is interesting, you know. So now we have two ed rentals on Airbnb. It's also on VRBO. Right. I do wonder. I'd love to hear from people that have a multiple its properties if they like when's the point when it you get one of those uh its services that helps you sync calendars like a third party yeah because like it, I, like you know i would love one page where kind of everything's there at one time and i can uh, see everything it's quickly right, right now on airbnb you have to switch between there's calendars a whole lot of clicking around and although there you did find a multi-calendar today but but even that it doesn't give me the kind of over it view like i'd love to have it where i could see Two or three a month at a time. Right. With the different ones and the prices and who's booking. Yeah, I think there are definitely, you know, third-party applications. It, it, it's funny because when we get inquiries or bookings, like in your email, you can't right away, like on your phone, you can't see which house it is. Like right. we'll get an inquiry um, on the phone and it's just like inquiry for these dates. And you're like, I wish it told me which house it was. But I guess I'm confused why Airbnb doesn't do that because right. I, mean, I think a significant amount of their rentals are by people that have either a couple of rooms in their house right. or they have a couple of uh, rentals. I'm surprised that they don't make it easier. Yeah, more visually. Um, has they're just like, we'll just allow these other... Outside developers, yeah. you know, feed, you know, eat into our, uh, eat into our. Uh, I don't system. understand yeah. why they would do that, but we'll, we will have to figure it out eventually. But that's good, and you know, I, you know, just going back to like at the end there, because these past couple months were pretty stressful. Because yeah, it's like, you know, there's the there's a challenge of just getting the structure shored up and all the infrastructure good, and then if you have this blank space. Floors, walls, painted, like it looks great. Now you and then it. it's almost like a whole other job on top of that, getting shelving and furniture and, you know, getting the lights and all that stuff. I mean, the thing is, too, we're pretty obsessive about, like, designing the house, you know, afterwards. So you're like, we want all these layers. Like, we need curtains for every single window, uh, which drove me insane. Uh, I was like, literally, I was losing sleep over it. I was like, I hate this. Um, Rugs. We had to order a bunch of rugs. We needed, we had a bunch of furniture and stuff, but there was all these little things, bookshelves, Well, you know. Well, the thing I always remind us is that at the end is not the time to penny pinch, you know. Right. We've spent all this, it's money, is making this awesome house, you know. Right. And it's a clean slate. Now that is not the time to then really cheap out and just make everything really, it's mediocre. Right. That's when you, you want to make sure every detail is really awesome. Yeah. Because then it brings everything out and all the work that you did to get to that its moment pays off. Right. So that's like, you know, buying the really good tile that it's what that it's yeah. what you want. Like don't go for the cheap 49 cent square foot at Lowe's just because it's on sale right. you know, find the tile that's actually going to look good because it's once you put the tile in it's done it's in and if you pay the guy to lay the tile the same amount of money for cheap tile for yeah. a tile that is worth more money also doing like custom carpentry instead of like going and just buying shelving or cabinets and just kind of jamming them into a space right. because it's real quick and easy and cheap you know, we decided to, like, we found a local guy who does carpentry, and we, like, worked with him and sketched out things, and things fit exactly right. right. And he was willing to use the reclaimed wood that yeah. we had been finding. Which, thank God, because we had some gorgeous wood. I mean, like, the the kitchen became this, like, dark, like, black walnut area, because we just happened to have that wood, and we happened mm -hmm. to buy that... Uh, countertop too with right. black walnut so you're like 
great. Well, that's incredible. That goes back to it being a puzzle and kind of a fun thing was that, you know, we... Right. The, the, a nice thing about taking a long time to redo a house is we have time to find stuff. Right. So that whole time we're waiting or saving up its money, we're also on Craigslist and at auctions, just buying stuff, not really a knowing what exactly it's going to be a use for, but it, we know... Well, we kind of... I mean, you can't just, like, randomly buy stuff that you're not well, going to use. It's like... I mean, like, I... Like, I I don't even know where I got that black walnut wood. I'm like, will oh, that, will that kind of material? Will yeah. I use it? But I don't know where exactly it's gonna. We go. didn't even know it was walnut. <laughs> I, I got these beautiful like heartwood pine beams. Yeah. Where I'm like, I don't know what we'll do with this, but we'll do uh, something. We ended up it's making these gorgeous like adult bunk beds, these like built-in bunk beds into the wall with it. Yeah, yeah, and and the other thing too is like the thing that was also stressful was when you're. I I don't know how else to say it, but designing on the fly. Like, I don't have, like... I had the kitchen drawn out. It's agile designing. I just don't know what the <laughs> hell. But you're just kind of like... Yeah. You have this idea, and you buy this thing, and you're like, okay, that fits. Right. Does this fit next to it? Well, I will say... <laughs> I hope so. That... Pinterest really yeah. kind of shined in this thing because you know we're dealing with this carpenter, you know, and his style's more like like country, a rustic country, like country cute, like almost. like that's what he kept kind of wanting to push on us because he saw we had this old wood, yeah. and I was like, no, we want it more like modern, modern. <laughs> and clean, and you know these are just kind of like verbal words. So we would go on Pinterest, yeah. And we would find photographs right. of different styles, and it kind of taught him a new yeah. his language. You know, so he was building things he had never built before. Right. But he could do it because he could see it. Yeah. And he really loved it. You know, it was right. like giving him a new challenge. And that was fun. I could see how if we had a guy who was not into that kind of thing, that would have been a very painful process. Right. So it's kind of that's the other part of the it's puzzles finding people who who have fun, right? Like doing he, that. He was kind of into uh, like he didn't mind when we were like, like he built these like shelf brackets out of wood, right? And I and I even approved it. He was like, "This is how I'm gonna do it," and I was like, "Great." Then we looked at, and then he put them up, right? And I was like, yeah. "I absolutely hate them." I didn't say that to him, but right. I was like, "That's not the look I want." So I spent up. Uh, crap load of money on solid brass shiny solid brass um no they weren't shiny they were like a matte brass that's like yeah. my whole thing right now is like matte brass these solid brass yeah. brackets and i was just like we just have to take them out yeah. and he was like fine yeah no i mean he it's know cool. i mean at the end of the day he's like you know I, you paid me both he, times yeah you like, know I'm, I'm good to go <laughs> but know? for me i'm like that's how it's gonna look forever and that's what i want right i want it to look exactly how i want it right. you know it's it's a little bit of ocd because you know for me at least because i don't want to walk into a room and see, and see all this nice stuff and just always look at this one thing and be like why didn't we take the time to the time yeah. just to fix that one thing and like, i will say this I was very stressed out because I get, I was getting super OCD about all these little things that finally I had to be like, I can't, like I'm exhausting myself. Like the other thing too that we learned with the farmhouse is you can get super OCD about certain things, and then once you're done with the, you know tiny little details that you're like, okay, I'm never, I'm like. I obsessed over that forever, and now I'm like, whatever, it's yeah. fine. Well, I think some of that it's that like, doesn't always happen. I think but... it's like a, some of it's like just a self health, you know, like yeah, you know, I need to make sure I'm having fun, you know, like I can't make it where it's not fun to do right. this. And I think I had a lot of fun finding all these details and solving the puzzles. You know what? It's you know. it's honestly it's fun for me once it starts to get rented. I'm just like, okay, now I feel better sure. that, like, yeah. I was exhausted for, right. like, you know, months straight. Right. Well... Because it, 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 it worked. Well, during that it's process, I can see why people choose just to go to its Lowe's. Yeah, or Home Depot. Yeah, or and you, you know, go to it's one of these places and it's, you're like, okay, I that. want all these kitchen cabinets. This is bathroom 
set, you know, cabinet sink set, uh, you know, these shelves just off right. the wall. And you right. can just buy it all, have it brought to at your house, and you could install the whole thing in like a weekend. Right. And it would look fine, you know. Uh, it, w- it would look new and fresh. And yeah. I get that. I guess, you know, like like we've said it before, and you know, those the problem is, is that those kind of, its materials don't, it lasts as long. Right. Because a lot of it's just... You have to replace it. It yeah. gets shabby. After 10 years, it can get shabby. And also because it doesn't always fit into the space. Right. Unless you planned it way ahead of time. It's like you built a bathroom to be able to fit yeah. these these bathroom cabinets that right. you bought for the kitchen cabinets. Right. You know? So it's just a different choices. And then furniture, we've talked about this it's before, you know... We have found that for the price we would pay to buy, like, brand new furniture at, like, Target or something. Yeah. You can get better quality furniture that's been it used for the same price. Right. You know? On Craigslist. Yeah. If you have the time to, like, think through. So, right. you know, if you can spend $5, $500, like, on a brand new couch at Target. Maybe. I don't know. I think I they sell no couches, idea. right? Yeah. I have no or idea. Or wherever. Some, some places are like that. Like, brand new... Or you can spend five hundred dollars and get like a, a restoration hardware couch from like some a rich person in an urban area who just decided they wanted to change their look. You know? Right. Or like we find, uh, especially in ur- you know we're not in an urban area, but we're two hours away from one. People move a lot, so they're just like, I got this a year ago. My job changed. It's practically brand new. You know, I work all the time. I'm never home. I barely sat on it. And you're like, this is incredible. But again, that takes time because it's not like when you go and shop and just you can buy what you want when you uh, want it. Then it's more like you're just kind of like uh, waiting for something to pop up. Right. It takes time to wait for the thing. And also... It takes a lot more work because that means we have to, to, to drive and pick it God up. Alive. We have to we store it. We have to haul it. it ourselves. Yeah, and store it somewhere because the house isn't going to be ready for six months. And yeah. You know, so it is a different it's model of doing it, but I think it comes out better. I mean, we were we were shopping for stuff on Craigslist, and, I mean, honestly, we were essentially storing it in our house. Like, we yeah. had, like, <laughs> several couches just, like, in our you know, living room and sunroom and just, we just like walk around them. We're like, we don't care. It's, it's temporary. It's yeah. only here for like three more months. I think a lot doesn't of doesn't matter. I mean, I bet a lot of people uh, use their houses. I bet if someone has a business, they also uh, use yeah. their house as like a staging area where you right. know, you're, you're storing paperwork right. and it's materials right. and tools and whatever. Now, else. that's not going to be the case forever because we're actually in the process of building basically a warehouse in our backyard. Right. Um, so that's not going to be the case. But, <clears throat> you know, you still have those problems. You have to haul it. You have to drive to get it. And you got to do what you got to do. Yeah. And so that saved us literally thousands of dollars. So if you go to the blog, we have kind of, it's before and after of photos and you can kind of uh, see and make a yeah. decision. Like, do you think we were too crazy to spend <laughs> all the time and effort trying to and do what we did or yeah. uh, would it have looked just fine if we had just bought uh, it stuff was, off the shelf? <clears throat> I will say this. It was pretty bad. Like I look at the photos. I'm like, Oh, this place was bad. Well, I don't mean like if we kept it like that, but oh. you know, if we had just bought stuff off the shelf, like how, I see what you're saying, not customize it as yeah. much. Yeah, sure. Uh, so we are actually currently traveling right now, so we're kind of on vacation. <laughs> in quotes. <laughs> well, just our kind of it's vacation. Yeah, uh, we're actually in Scandinavia. We're in. The Arctic Circle of Norway. Yeah, right now doing this podcast <laughs> with great internet, like better internet here than we have in like America. at home. Yeah. It's, in, it's incredible. Yeah. yeah. So we actually have a job in uh, Vienna, and we're just traveling around for a month. Uh, yeah. We got a car, and just kind of, it's cool. You know, we're on the other side of Airbnb, right? In the sense of we are staying in Airbnbs, and right. we'll like rent places. You know. Uh, like a couple days ahead, a week ahead, right? You know, and just kind of it's make it up as we go along. 
like right now we're staying in like a a cabin. It's a little cabin. Uh, kind of in the uh, it's mountains by a national park. But then when we're going from one place to an- another, we're just trying to find a place to, to sleep. And there's actually a lot of places where people have like l- l- little tiny places. Like little guest house. houses yeah. or, or someone had an apartment underneath great. their house. They're cheap. They're like $70. You well, know? that and they, they allow one night rentals, right. which to me is insane. But you're like, it's so it's, smart. If it's behind, it's your house though. It's much easier than if it was... Farther. Yeah, because you can yeah. grab. But, but it's great, you know. Instead of paying for a hotel where you're in a hotel room, we're getting places that have a washer a kitchen. dryer, a kitchen. Yeah, you know, the kitchen bed. is key because when we travel, eating out is so right. it's crazy expensive. So, um, well, and it's, it, I mean, especially here, especially yeah. here in Scandinavia, yeah. you're like, whoa. Right. Um, it, so being able to cook is, is right. key. And food's uh, more expensive mainly because they have the true cost of food. Right. Where people are being paid well. Like, right. Everyone uh, along uh, the chain gets yeah. paid well. You know, food isn't just factory food, you know. Right. Anyway. So I only bring that up because, uh, not only are we renting on Airbnb for places to stay, we're also hosting from far away. Right. And I will say, I was kind of against this when we first started on Airbnb. Right. You know, I was like, I don't think it's good to, like, not meet people. And uh, I was I was actually kind of just, it's fearful that that, right. that it wouldn't work. And I, and I will say I was wrong. Yeah. It works. I mean, when we're in town, we still like to meet people that come and stay. If we can, yeah. Because it's just part of our day and... It's nice to meet people. It's enjoyable. You yeah. Know, we kind of like the uh, the uh, hospitality Well, part we also it. like to meet hosts if they're on the property. Right. Like here, too. We were like, right. we want to ask you some questions. But we will say that it works. I mean, you know, we are fully booked in September. So yeah. At only... the farmhouse, not at the river house yet. Right. So we have th- only three nights in September that haven't been booked. Right. And two of those nights could still be booked. So right. people are there right now. And I'm just dealing with them through its messages. Right, through the app. And it's great. And and I, and I will say, and I think it works for two reasons. Because we made sure the place is perfect. You know, we really thought right. of all the details. It avoids all the stress. Right. Because there's no... It's question of where things are and how things work and yeah. operate. Uh, we also, I also try and give the it guests all the info up front. Right. I notice when we're staying in Airbnbs, I have to kind of like chase hosts down right. to figure out, okay, where is this place? You know, how is this going to work? How am I going to get the key? Like, just where do we park? I mean, all those things. <laughs> I always, ha- and I have it on, it's my calendar, three days before people check in. I have just like a thing that I've pre-done yeah. that explains everything. The code to the house, the Wi-Fi, yeah. cooking, barbecue, parking. Places nearby to go hiking. Everything. You know? I mean, you know, it's maybe it's too much info, but I find that That's better. it solves all the problem. Because 99% of the time people check in, I just say, is everything okay? And people are like, everything's great. We found everything. And that is so much stress off of my right, back. Right, right. Well, I mean, we have to say, like, you know, we came to this little cabin that we're renting, and we're in rural Norway, and we're like, where do we go hiking? Like, is there a map around? Mm-hmm. And the guy was just kind of like, yeah, just wherever. And we're like, what? Yeah. I mean, he was a nice guy. He's just not into the hospitality part. Of right. It. So and, you're uh, kind of like, yeah. okay. Right. And we didn't have a coffee maker. Right. <laughs> so, you know, it's stuff like that where you're like, those are the little details that are super important for travelers. And I think it also helps to travel to know what might be right. missing. Like we stayed at a place in Trondheim, Trondheim. in Norway. And we stayed at a really cool apartment, apartment yeah, in town. Great. But the problem was is that she was very unclear about how to find it and how to get in and where to park. And I probably had to message, like, yeah. we went back and forth about 15 times. Yeah. You know, and, and it was all fine. You know, I was just really confused and flummoxed, you right. know, by what was happening. And so she finally answered all the it's questions I needed. But for me, it wasn't a great experience. But for her, 
what a pain in the ass because yeah. like she had to like hold my hand so much instead of her just like pre uh, writing kind of this stuff and putting yeah. maps and stuff like that. Right. Well, I mean, we found on some Airbnbs as as renters, they won't have the actual address in the itinerary. It'll just be like this town in Sweden, and you're like, what? <laughs> I don't know. If Airbnb allows that because it's in your home or it's like behind your house and Airbnb, you know, like, so if I book two, it's months ahead, they understand that hosts don't want to give the address oh. to like your personal home so someone wouldn't come to your Oh, house. maybe but, that's what it is. But then again, if I don't ask people... When like, are they going to tell me? I'm arriving tomorrow. Right. Where is your house? Well, and then people yeah. like, oh yeah, it's here. It's like... That there there needs to be a system where like I don't have to ask for that. Like know? like maybe it unlocks the address like the day before or something. But but what's hard is like we're driving through rural Norway and Sweden, and if I hadn't asked, like, are these the GPS coordinates? And they, you know, you're like, what if we were on the road and we were like, wait, where where am I even going? Yeah, you know, but it's just it's again <laughs> those are that's the kind of funkiness of airbnb it's because it it's is. not it's not a hotel it's yeah. not hotels but it's just i find though it makes as for hosts ourselves in dealing with people from far it, yeah away it takes this like off. it would it would make our vacation very stressful especially with we're eight hours ahead of these people of me having to a message people people right. being confused and not getting answers right away right. and not all that stuff. So I just find it's better just to like think it through, send them more information than they probably want, but at least it's all there. Well, I do want to mention there was a group of people. So there was a hurricane that happened and they had booked <laughs> in. Really? A hurricane? Well, <laughs> who knows when you're listening to this, yeah. but it was a hurricane Irma and um, they had booked down in South Carolina and Hilton Head. And actually, that area, like Savannah and Hilton Head, got um, evacuated. So they're like, our Airbnb got canceled, but we would love to rent your place. You know, it's closer to us and whatever. The, the very, uh, next, the very night. next night, right? right? So the great thing had been, and they were super, uh, like, one of those guests, kind of like us, who were, like, asking a million questions, like, one by one, you know, like, 20 messages, and you're like, oh, no. Um, they turned out awesome, but... What was cool was we were able to coordinate with our cleaner and with the person who's doing laundry for us to be like, we got this last minute booking. We need this done, this done, this done. And it was fine. Right. I mean, and, the, and that's something that works. We got both of our people that are doing work it's for us on uh, WhatsApp. WhatsApp, yeah. Uh, which is just an internet Based like in, chat, yeah. yeah. So it's data based. So right now we're in Europe and we have just data SIM cards that we right. got off Amazon. They're amazing. Um, so we can WhatsApp these people at home. So we have one a woman that cleans and one a woman that that cleans the the laundry, uh, laundry. at so our house. It's cleaning the house, the house cleaner, and then the a laundry person. And right. we just do that. It just works better that way. It's just, just how we prefer it, but yeah. some people have their cleaner clean right. the laundry too. Uh, but uh, it, but it, but it, it's great. That's kind of been it's your job. It's like I handle the guests. Yeah, I handle and the, you handle the back end. The back end, and it's great. And we they have schedules, and it really works out. So what I did before we left was um, two things. I made sure both of them were on WhatsApp, and I actually asked if they were on PayPal. Because then, because usually we write our, our cleaner a check every time, which is kind of a pain. So you're like, I just want to like text you some money. Right. Um, so, but, but what was funny, yeah, Venmo basically. And she was like, yeah, I have PayPal, which I didn't think that she would because she probably buys stuff online. Um, so we started PayPaling her and yeah. it's so, when, she, when she's like, I'm done, the laundry's at your house. I'm like. PayPal, like yeah. it's so much easier than yeah. like write a paper check. Like all my checks just go to her. I'm like, <laughs> but it's and it's faster for her too. So the whole remote thing has actually worked out great because the people we have are responsive, right? And that's what's helpful. And it's kind of been our dream. I mean, we've been working towards it. We like to travel, and yeah. so it's been our dream to have a couple of rentals going, right? Where we could actually live away from our home for for a while, a yeah. month at a time, right? 
and have be a making income from our rentals, right? Paying our expenses to travel plus making more income, right? And being able to handle it all from far away. So right. it's not something we could develop overnight, but like even this a year is the first time that we've been able to have a cleaner and someone clean the right. laundry as easy as it is now. Before a year ago when 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 we did this and we had gone away, we hired like a friend. And right. That worked okay, but it's different when you're dealing with like a friend who's kind of like doing a, you a, a favor. favor. Although we were paying We him. were paying him, but it's kind of like that thing where I don't know. It's it's different right. when you're hiring a friend than versus it is hiring a, like a, a worker person who they do this for, for a, living. a living. Like she cleans houses for a living, so we, I like that relationship much better. Right, because it's an employer employee relationship. Right. So you're like, this is your job, and I'm paying you to do the job, right. and it's not just like yeah. I'm not sure I even see an employee employee. It's more like two. It's businesses talking to each other. Two business. That, yeah. that that's what I mean. It's like yeah. two. Two freelance businesses working together as like right. a symbiotic relationship. Right. And when you have a friend who has another job already and, right. and, and he's like, yeah, this is like kind of an extra thing and I don't want to like piss you guys off, but whatever, right. you know, like. <laughs> uh, okay, so we do have a farmhouse. So that was our first ed- rental and we've had a great ed- year. On yeah, this place. it's uh, been awesome. So this is our third, uh, our third year, a year yeah. of, of it being booked. So it's kind of I like, can't believe it. So I mean, that's why I say it's like we see these things as like lifetime properties. I mean, right? Just I'm sure there will be good years and bad years, but so far it's been pretty steady. And so what we've been doing is like we slowly improve it. Uh, for instance, we had to. F- to it's it replace the it washer the right. clothes washer. Right. So so there was someone staying there and it was a bummer because it actually the washer stopped working while she was there and she had like three little kids. So that kind of sucked. But the thing is as Jay always says is communication. You're like we were like we can wash clothes for you. We can bring them to the laundromat like whatever you need like, we'll do it. Like I'm going to order a new one but it's not going to get here tomorrow. Right, right. right. So well, so the washer we had, sorry, I'm going to get really geeky on the washer here. Uh, the washer we had was an LG combination washer, washer dryer. It's not really an electric dryer. It's like a condensation dryer. And the whole point was, is that it's a, it's in a really old house. So there's right. a lot of space, you know, there isn't like a big, uh, like laundry room. A laundry. It's a closet. It's like a little tiny space and it needed to be small and fit in there. Right. And it was like a torn, it was like. It was one of those smaller washers, and they're super expensive. They're like nine hundred. And the person we had bought the house from, they're the ones that had put this. They thing just in put there. it in there. And I think at the time, that was the only choice. Right. So when we started to f- try and find one to replace it with, you know, a normal size a washer doesn't go in there. Yeah. And those weird uh, European ones are very expensive and hard to right. find. We found that s- since you know, just in the past couple of years. American companies have been building these compact ones. And they're basically made for people who have apartments. Right. Where you could put it by a shower. Right. And so you could like temporarily hook it up where the water just runs into the pipe and the Yeah, it drains. Yeah. You know, it doesn't hold like a huge pile of a a laundry. It's like small loads of clothes. Right. So so we had researched it because we were like, I don't want to spend like $800 on a washer. $800? More like, you know... $1,800 $1,800 right, for, for these, these fancy, fancy ones, ones, right? So so the thing was, we were like, mostly the people who need a washer are people who have little kids. It's very rare that anyone's there long enough to use the washer, but it is a nice convenience to have. We have all the hookups. Let's find something. And people it like to stay at this place for a week at a time. So right. So you want we people... We get it. Right. Yeah. So we, we, we get it. So the like, awesome thing was we found this thing called... It, it's made by Magic Chef. I'm going to link to it. Uh, I think we just bought it on Amazon and had it delivered. It was $200. Yep. And it actually hold like I was reading all, we were like crazy reading all the reviews. Like, is this thing going to fall apart? Whatever. And everyone's like, yeah, I wash huge loads in this thing. Like, yep. it's actually awesome. It's a top loader. But it's really it's, a light. It's re- it's like we, I could carry it as myself. It's like right. the size of a humidifier. A, a, a de- Dehumidifier, yeah. It's is a little bit size. taller than that, but... It was it was awesome. So we 
it doesn't have a dryer, but we're like people just hang yeah. it up, you know? So it was 200 bucks. I'm going to link to it. It was, it was a lifesaver. We installed it ourselves. I just yeah. put it in there. I hooked up the water. I made sure the pump thing was going out. I mean, washers aren't hard to hook up as long as you have the water and everything there. Yep. So that was, that was great actually. And you know, and so we've, you know, we got a, a Dyson, it's vacuum, so it's really nice. Uh, because yeah, we, we found that guests often yes. want to clean, yes. which you know kind of goes against what you think people are yeah. are are coming to do. But we were finding people were asking, "Where's a vacuum?" We like, love a vacuum, you know. So we do not expect people to clean the house. But I think also if you have little kids or dogs or whatever, and there's right. like little crumbs, right. like messes, they're like, I need yeah. to be able to like clean up a mess, which I understand because when I'm at a rental too, I'm like, I don't want to leave like a mess on We the also floor. had a guest stay who was a super techie. He actually yes. worked at Google yeah. uh, and ran their uh, its network in one of their home offices up in Boston. And uh, he was telling us, yeah. That we could improve our Wi-Fi. Yeah. And he actually told us exactly how what to, to do it. He told us what equipment to buy yeah. and how to install it. And so we actually followed his advice. It, w- it was kind of pricey, you know. Yeah, it was pricey. It was like two, three hundred dollars. Two hundred dollars. A system, and we uh, set up a mesh network. Yeah, it's a ubiquity mesh network. It's awesome. It's awesome, and it's we actually bought one for our house afterwards because. The extenders we were using were, like, really dinky, like, just, they're not, they weren't great. And we were finding that the, just the speeds on them weren't great. Like, if you were in the writer's cabin and you were trying to get Netflix, it would, like, take forever. It would eventually connect, but, like, the menu would take forever. But once we put the mesh network in, it was so great. I can be hanging out on the hammock. Right. A hundred feet from the back door. And still get internet. Right. You know, it's great. And by mesh network, I just mean um, there's different access points that you plug in throughout your property. And then, and, but it works together. It works together. Uh, so the thing was, when I had bought extenders, just regular like Netgear extenders, you have to like set up each one, right. whatever. These ones you just plug in and it's like, it sees the network. Like, it's kind of the, it's a new thing. If anyone's into the internet, like... There's a company called EERO. They're the yeah. ones that kind of like pioneered this. And then there's there's a there's like Nighthawk. Uh, I'll link to the one we got. I yeah. really like it. Um, Google has one like a system. And so. as I said, I I bought one for our house because we and have an office in the back, and I was like, I'm not getting a great. Plus, it's easier back to talk to to like get into the uh, router. Yeah, you have an app like on your phone, and you can just like get into it and see. Right. Oh, it doesn't have a connection with our ISP. Right. Okay, I gotta like reset some yeah. things, you but know. It, but it, we find that that was very helpful. And then, you know, and so I think it's with our current property, instead of just, you know, being like, all right, it's done and let's just like not touch it again, we're always trying to improve it. So, like, right. I wanna redo our deck uh, just because our deck is getting It is getting old. That, uh, that kind of wood starts to rise well, and starts cracking. Yeah, you know? it's treated wood. I'd like to get some uh, new couches for the front room. And by a new, I mean Craigslist Used. new. Yeah. <laughs> you did not mention my Ikea hacks video. Oh. Something I did was we have this beautiful like enamel glass Ikea cabinet that holds the towels. And actually the last post on the blog, you can see it. So what I did was um, the thing about this design was they had this like key lock thing. And the key was the only way for you to open and close the cabinet. And it broke several times. And I fixed it a bunch of times. And this time it just like snapped in half. Because I don't know, they had little kids and the kids were playing with it. So I was able to fix that myself. And you can see the video on the blog. And, um, you know, it's things like that where it's like when the functionality just like (laughs) disintegrates. And you're like, you know, what can I do to just make this continue working it's still a sturdy piece of furniture but let's improve it first of all and let it keep going so that was actually fun and i got featured on ikea hacker ikea hackers yeah there's this whole world of people that like buy ikea products and use them in unintended ways yeah and change them so i actually sent the the post to ikea hacker yeah and uh yeah, so that's kind of exciting. I was like, yay, I got featured. Yeah, that was fun. That's cool. Okay, so just some uh, numbers. So in 2017, 
Out of 365 nights, we have booked the farmhouse for 180 nights. Huh, I'm surprised. I thought we were past 200. No. Oh, no. So, I mean, our goal is 200, but, I mean, it's only mid-September, so we still oh, have, you know, true. we still have several more months. So, I, I think we'll hit, I mean, I think we'll definitely hit our uh, our 200 nights, and we'll probably go over that. Um, yeah. You know, I find that, like, for us in our area, it's just the beginning of the uh, a year is just hard to book. January, right, right. February, it's just like the the depth of winter right and there's some weekends but you know our area is is outdoors area people want to hike they want to go on kayaks but that's where we're getting like 10 it's nights booked right eight to ten nights rather than like 24 nights Mm -hmm. so those empty nights are really in the beginning of the uh year and then as we get into the fall doing the weekdays is difficult because, you know, kids are back in school. Right. People aren't going on vacation during the week. They right. Work yeah, but, but in September, I mean, we're almost fully booked. September so it's kind of crazy. You're like, what's going on right. with this? That's what I'd love to see. Yeah. I want I want people booked all month, all the time. We'll but. see. But, you know, it's, we. I try and be conservative on what to expect. Uh, and so, yeah, the 200... Uh, And we raised our prices. I think that's part of it, too, is, like, we might have only done 180 this year, but but our prices were higher. They were higher during uh, holidays. I push those prices. I think you're a lot more aggressive. I'm very aggressive. Uh, Because our place is nice. I know. But it's like we said, it's before. You have to look at the uh, market in the area. And, you know, uh, unfortunately, there are people that we've talked about this who... I think they totally undervalue their place. Yeah. People that have, you know, older people especially that have their houses paid off. It's like a second home. Yeah. They heard about Airbnb and they're like... It's a hobby. I had this house just uh, sitting there forever. I go there three weeks, a, you know, and, and now I have a way to make any amount of cash. So they like way undervalue their place right. because it's just all free. They're like 90 bucks a night. And right. you're like, oh. And, and it's a great deal. You're like, wow, on the, uh, on river, the river for like a hundred bucks a night. Like, yeah. it's a little For junky. like three bedrooms. But that's great. So, yeah. you know, we have to compete with people like that. Right, right. Uh, and then, like I said, the uh, Edge River House, we booked 11 nights. And so I'm hoping we could do like... Yeah. 40 nights by the end of the year? So we're starting in October because we're not home right. essentially till October 15th. So we, at first we were like, we're going to book it while we're away. And then it was like... Well, we want to be there when those first guests start right. to show up because the house is kind of quote unquote untested. Right. So we want to be there in case there's any confusion or problem. Now. Yeah. Uh, and we actually have friends staying in the house right now. And we told them we want them to test out the house. Yeah. So they're cooking and barbecuing and Using turning on lights. Using the shower. And, and, yeah. I mean, they're, when I said bartering with the people who took photographs, that's how we bartered. Um, it's this young couple uh, who's from the area but moved away and came back. And we were like... And she's a professional she, photographer. She's a professional like wedding photographer and And photographer her husband... Has a drone. Oh my god! So he's been taking drone like above. Yeah, shot. of the property. Something we've always wanted to do. Yeah, so it was great. So it's awesome. So we've we were kind of and they live at their parents' house in a bedroom in their parents' house and we we're like, do you guys want to stay here for a month? And actually, we I was still ready to pay them for the photographs, but they were like, yes, and we're not going to charge you because right. we're so excited. So it's actually the perfect thing. Yeah. Uh, just being able to have someone test run where you're like, did anything break? Yeah. What do we need to fix? So I don't think, because we're talking about our uh, numbers, I don't think it's quite dawned on us yet, especially on on you. But very soon, we're going to be having two uh, rental incomes coming right. in. That's going to, and I don't think we'll really be able to experience that till next spring because right. the uh, winter time is going to get slow. But next spring, yeah. I mean, we're going to be making... So we, you know, rent like 20 nights on one place. We'll right. be renting 20 nights on, on another, another place. place. That's like 40 a nights of income yeah. every month. Yeah. It's going to be a lot of money. Yep. And I hope so. I yes. Know. <laughs> I know. I mean, and I know into 
intellectually that was the the plan and the dream right. why we did all this work but i just think the a visceral right. feeling of seeing that money in our bank account is yeah. is going to really give us the ability to do a lot of things we want to do pay off debt yeah yeah well it is you know one of our goals is to pay off debt real quick and when if you say pay off debt it's not it's consumer debt. It's, not consumer it's, debt. Uh, house debt. Yeah, right? how, mortgage debt, yeah. where you're starting to pay down the mortgage. Like it's faster than what faster. the bank expects. It's you very to. unglamorous. I'm not like right. let's go to Paris. It's right. like like if we pay these houses off fast. And I know people argue about that. Like, well, maybe I use that money to invest in other places. So anyway, right, sure. But the thing is, we would have many more options and that's the exciting thing yeah it's great no i'm excited i'm like so happy about it so just to kind of wrap this up uh kind of randomly so we haven't done a podcast here for a while right and i kind of wonder if i don't know i mean we've kind of gone back and forth if we should continue the podcast or not yeah you know number one is i don't know what people want to know uh right you don't get a lot of like comments on the blog and right i don't know if we have to so much be like i'm not saying we have to be popular i just i like it when there's like a at least a small group of people who, yeah other people that rent on airbnb and there's conversations going on and i feel like when we do the podcast we're like talking to an audience of people who then are giving us questions or they're giving us information and we're learning from each other right kind of feel we haven't quite gotten to that point on shampoo and booze. Well, I think also, like, the thing about running an Airbnb business just in the day-to-day regular months is, I mean, you're checking people in, you're doing laundry, and you're like, Like that's what it is. Right, like, after the, after we had renovated this place, like, there isn't a lot of change. It's like, now it just goes. It's like, people book. They checked in. We cleaned. You we know. cleaned. I did the laundry. And, and, you know. and I know other podcasts, they do things like they interview like someone that like made an app that helps you right. you know, book people in. Right, right. I'm not sure how interested I am in doing stuff like that. Well, I like talking to other hosts. Yeah, we could do other hosts. I, I like talking to other hosts who like rent in a different way, you know? Like sure. either they rent something in their house or they're in a city or... Right. You know, like, so we're kind of a learning from them. Right. I think that's interesting. Uh, hopefully, now that our renovation's done, we'll have a little more time to interview people. Uh, yeah. But, yeah, I would love to hear what people want yeah. out of this podcast because, you know, obviously... So- you can either email us from the blog, shampooandbooze.com, or even better is if you just leave a comment. Uh, or you can call our voicemail line, and the phone number is 540-407-8486, and leave us a message. Okay, that is it for this episode. And uh, you can check out the links that we talked about and to join the conversation on shampooandbooze.com. I will put up some before and after photos. Okay, bye.